Yeah. Is it nicked from there, or is it? Where's the name of the studio? Well, uh, well, 45s were of course the old school uh, um, speed for singles to be played at, and um, I just like. And then when I got my first studio, its address was 45 Royal Parade Mews. So it was a gift, really. <laughs> it couldn't be anything else other than, other than uh, that for me. And when I moved here, I thought about changing the name, but actually I still quite like it, so I kept it. And also the album was recorded there. Yes. Um, um, how long have you had the studio? What other like, of your singles have been done there? Any other bands used it? Um, well, since it moved, um, there was my record that, uh, that's been done there. Uh, uh, Nine Blow Zero have recorded the record there now. And uh, a few other people have come and done bits and pieces. I think, you know, uh, the, th the thing I think about studios is that the, the days of sort of big studios, it's sort of numbered. Everyone has a project studio, which is great, you know, that's sort of essentially what my last studio was, but uh, I, I think that to have the space, which I have now, for a band to set up and play and work things out, you know, that's, that's the good sort of medium uh, ground on, on which a studio will flourish. Having said that, I set up the studio like, you know, for the same reason I set up the last one, which which is that so I could be independent and have a space for me to work. It's not, you know, I haven't set it up with it in mind to be a sort of commercial studio. If that happens, great, but it's not my thought behind it. Now, going back to the bluffers, tonight you're playing at Gibson Studios. Do you have a tour planned? Are you, are you touring at all? Do you have a date? Um, the, uh, we're going to America um, in, in a couple of weeks for, for like nearly a month. And then I'm doing solo too. Uh, well, the, this album was delayed somewhat because the mixing of it didn't work out. And then I was lucky enough to get uh, Bob Clearman into mixing. He is, he's Mr. Super Posh, lovely, brilliant, fantastic ears. And uh, so the, uh, <laughs> it was meant to, this album was meant to get out in October. You know, it was essentially, the recording was finished by the summer. But uh, I thought it was worth waiting until we could get the recording out. I thought it was so good, so pleased with what we did that I didn't want it to fail on you know, the you know, last, last ground of the mixer. One thing I am very curious about, how did you get Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis on board? <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I saw the album. I thought, have I read that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it was, it was strange. Um, they they um, uh, came to his play in Los Angeles and got talking afterwards. And... Uh, you know, they're very nice people. It's sort of, uh, 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 when you meet someone that famous, it's sort of, in a way, it's, it's quite awe-inspiring, and probably for all the wrong reasons, but, uh, that, you know, they're really nice people, and um, it so worked out that I was, you know, finishing off the record in Los Angeles, so we got together again, and I asked them if I'd to come on and sing and do stuff like that. And they said yes. So it was really, you know, it was a bit of a, um, it, 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 it was an entire coincidence. But, but you know, uh, singing with, with Vanessa was absolutely brilliant. We did our vocals live together, facing each other. And so the whole spirit of the record, which was to record it live, was sort of maintained, even though we were overdone in the vocals, how many thousand miles of vocals from London. And so the song that um, John, it's too close to the sun. Mm. It's very unusual, very electro instrumental, with his very sort of brooding vocals, mm. with his narration over the top. Mm. Was that, is that your, was one of your songs, one of your compositions? Yes, it was. Um, and uh, I, I, I did an instrumental on my last record, and I sort of have a fondness now for the instrumental uh, tracks. I think I'm going to try one per record. And. <laughs> uh, it was just, you know, I, I, I said to Johnny, you know, just these words over and over again, how we like, and so he decided to go British for it. Yeah. <laughs> Too close to the sun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wondered if you'd ask him, can you Jack Sparrow for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so, you know, it was just brilliant to uh, hear him do that, and uh, I just like the, uh, you know, it's sort of uh, enigmatic. I think. That's how I like it. It's funny you said that um, 
in meeting someone that famous, quite awe inspiring. Surely you didn't think it the other way around. Maybe Johnny Depp, big squeeze band, saw your name, thought I'd go to a gig. Maybe you didn't think he'd end up talking to you. Did he mention at all that he was? Well, uh, um, I, I'm, uh, I think I'm one of his favourite guitarists, which is, which is very nice. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there was that, that, that certainly was the connection that he, that he came to, to us. And, uh, and, and it's nice to know, uh, because uh, we haven't been, neither Squeeze nor myself have been super successful. Everything you do, uh, like sending little bottles out that you throw, throw out and occasionally someone picks them up and <coughs> comes back to you. And that's really nice. Because Squeeze, I mean, I've um, been a fan of something I've found in the States. Squeeze are very big uh, um, across the pond. Mm-hmm. Do you think the fact that you're successful back of that helped with yourself and the fluffers getting gigs out there and you and your solo yeah, yeah it, it definitely helped but um, you know when Squeeze split up which is now 11 years ago before we got back together again two years ago uh, I took the view that I had the sort of brand name to, to support me in my solo world but it's sort of right like starting again I don't think I've ever been you know, individually particularly famous or well known. So if you go to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, for instance, you know, and people say, you know, you, you ask a Glen Tilbury, it's most people won't know. So, so it, you know, in a sense, it was like starting again. Uh, I, um, but I enjoyed that process because at the very beginning of it, I said to myself that what I would do is to a lot and see if I can build it up myself. And it did, you know, it actually it worked, so, uh, most places. Um, so by the time I had the fluffers out there, you know, there was a sort of ground swell of people coming, coming to see me, which was very uh, nice. But you're saying that people will know your name. Do you think you've got, also, uh, to me, you've got a very distinctive voice. As soon as anyone hears that, they automatically would associate you with the band. Have Squeeze fans embraced your new work? Your, you know, to any, any of your gigs or...? Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, so, you know, I think that you'll get the same with any sort of cross-section of people. Some people just want to hear old stuff. Other people are interested in what you're doing now, and then will either like it or not. And I think that most of the people who are sort of interested in, in, in new stuff have liked what I'm doing, and that audience is growing. You know. um, there's always that, you know, when you have the push, when you have the groundswell of something like Squeeze, when you have chart records, that's going to be, you know, that's going to define what you are. And I haven't had that sort of exposure for a long while. So a certain amount of people are always associated with that, and I don't mind that, that's up to them. But, um, you know, f- for myself, I, I-, I want to keep on moving forward, you know, and I, I love my past, but if it were the only thing going for me, I, I-, I wouldn't be uh, really very happy. So you're just for now the future, I was going to ask the future, any sort of more plans for Squeeze for the future, but from what you're saying, it's 